So yeah, we're uh, live here at uh, First Street Wine Company, and uh, Mike is here as well, so he will be uh, chiming in and uh, giving his two cents worth. I told him he's got to say all good things. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, as Neil had said, um, this is being uh, videoed today, and um, uh, they're going to actually put this uh, a slide set together with the video. This will be posted up on YouTube. Uh, and we'll uh, post on all of our uh, uh, social media outlets as well. So um, anyway, we're excited about that. Thank you, uh, Lane and Paul, for uh, offering to do that. Um, so today, yeah, we're going to talk about Malbec. Um, so I think we'll do this the same way we've done in the past. Um, I will do the overview of uh, Malbec, the varietal Malbec, and then we'll dive into the tasting. And then at the end of the session, uh, we'll pop everybody up on the screen and we can have an uh, uh, interactive discussion um, and have a little uh, social uh, discussions um, virtually. Uh, so anyway, um, I'm going to talk about Malbec. Uh, Malbec is a uh, Bordeaux varietal. Um, it is one of the six uh, varietals that they can blend uh, into, uh, into the wines in Bordeaux. Um, so uh, Merlot uh, originated uh, in Bordeaux, France. Um, so I'm going to talk about three kind of major regions uh, uh, about, uh, that Malbec is grown in, um, France, Argentina, and California. Um, it is also grown in uh, other regions as well. Not a lot, but um, it is also grown in Oregon and Washington uh, and other regions. But I think the three major regions uh, really is France, Argentina, uh, and California. Um, so um, Malbec was uh, fairly um, widely grown in Bordeaux. Um, and then um, in 1956, uh, Bordeaux had a major frost and it killed off 75% of the Malbec. Um, and after that, they really didn't replant Malbec. Um, so it's kind of one of the lesser varietals, um, lesser grown varietals in Bordeaux right now. Um, it's used mostly as a blender. Um, it's probably the fourth or fifth uh, planted varietal in, in Bordeaux, right? You got Merlot and Cab as the primary varietals and Cabernet Franc. Um, there's probably even more Petit Verdot in uh, Bordeaux than Mal uh, Malbec uh, because they use Petit Verdot uh, predominantly as a blender. Um, and then um, there's another important region in uh, France called Cahors. Um, and Cahors also got hit by the frost in 1956, um, but they ended up replanting uh, the Malbec after that. So um, Malbec is uh, the predominant uh, varietal in Cahors. Um, and uh, the reason I'm kind of bringing that up is that the, um, the flavor profile of, of the Cahors Malbecs are very earthy. Um, a lot of meaty, kind of earthy, bacony style Malbec. So it's, it's really kind of unique uh, and it's, it's diff quite different than the Malbecs you get in Argentina or, or California. Um, now, um, Argentina, uh, Malbec is the fastest uh, planted varietal in Argentina. Um, the majority of Malbec uh, is coming from Argentina today. Um, the, the region where you can get the, the highest quality or they're known for the highest quality Malbec is the Mendoza region. Um, in Mendoza, it's a higher alti altitude region. It's around uh, uh, 5,000 feet elevation. Um, and um, so a lot of the Malbecs, so Argentina has kind of been flooded in the U.S. market um, with Malbec. So you can find a lot of the Argentina Malbecs here. Um, a lot of the, most of the Malbecs that we get here are kind of high production Malbecs, right? So you're we're really not getting a lot of the, the higher quality, small production uh, Malbecs here, um, just because of the, the, the challenges around distribution. Um, you can find them, but predominantly, I mean, you're going to get mostly the, the, the higher production style of uh, Malbecs. And uh, most of the Argentina Malbecs that I've had um, tend to be very fruit forward. Um, I like to call it that old world style fruit. So um, more of that um, kind of jammy, kind of um, pruney, kind of uh, really kind of fruit forward, old world style fruit. 
um, in those Argentina Malbacs. So very, very different uh, than the Cahor uh, Malbacs, which have more of the earthiness uh, characteristics to them. Um, so California, um, so Malbec was heavily grown in California. Um, and it was primarily used um, at, in bulk wine. So it was a lot, it used a lot as a blender um, into bulk wine. So I don't know, back in the, well, prohibition up to really kind of the 1960s, 1970s, right? You had a lot of those jug wines, uh, they called them, you know, Burgundies and Matus and Lancers. And, um, you know, they were really kind of high quality bulk wines. There was a lot of Malbec. Um, that were in those uh, and blended in those uh, in those jug wines and those high production wines. Um, Malbec also was pretty heavily grown in in Livermore. Um, and then um, what happened is in the 70s, 80s, um, probably more closer to the 80s, right? We started going to more varietal style wines. So instead of uh, naming the wines just kind of generic names. Right, we went by more by uh, varietal names, Merlot and Cab and Chard, et cetera. And so the Malbec wasn't very popular varietal. So over the years in California and Livermore, there's been less and less Malbec planted um, and used because it's just not that, that well known of a varietal. Um, and then it was used mostly as a blender. Um, there has been since, I think, somewhat of a little resurgence of Malbec locally, at least here in Livermore. Um, I know of uh, quite a few uh, new vineyards that have gone in that are planting Malbec. Um, it's still very small acreage compared to, you know, Cab and Merlot and Chard and, and such, but, um, but it has somewhat been on the increase in the, um, uh, in the uh, acreage over the last, uh, I'd say, five to 10 years. So with that said, I'll talk a little bit more about the Livermore Malbec in a second, but um, why don't we go ahead and pop up the slide, Neil, with the, uh, the three different Malbecs that we're going to be tasting today. So today we're going to taste the 16 Malbec, the 17 Malbec, and the uh, 17 Malbec uh, Reserve. So I'll give kind of a, um, an overview um, of those um, three uh, Malbecs. Uh, the similarities and the differences uh, before we actually dive into the, the tasting of those. Um, so the um, 20, so, so our Malbec, um, we predominantly source the Malbec from a vineyard called the White Cat Vineyard uh, here in Livermore. It's on the east side of Livermore. Um, it's in the Crane Ridge area. So those of you that are familiar with Livermore, it's over there by um, the Poppy Ridge Golf Course. Um, and the White Cat Vineyard is a very important vineyard for us because that's where we get our Cabernet Franc. Uh, we get our Malbec, uh, of course, from there. We get some Cab from there. And we get our Syrah from there. So we get a lot of varietals from this vineyard block. Um, so all three of these uh, Malbecs that we're going to be tasting today come from the White Cat Vineyard. Um, there has been a couple years where I've got some Malbec from the Gilmetti Vineyard, which is a little further east. Um, and I've used that mostly in blending into the White Cat Malbec, but, but these three are all the White Cat Vineyard. Um, I wanted to talk about the blocks a little bit of, the, of that vineyard. So as you can see on my notes here, um, like if you look at the 2016 Malbec, it's got 89% what I call the upper block, uh, upper new block, and then 11% lower old block. So there's two blocks, there was two blocks in this vineyard. So there was an older block that was about 20 years old. Um, and then there's the, they, re, they planted a one acre block, um, which I'm calling the upper block or the new block. Um, the reason um, that they actually um, replanted the mall back into a new block and then actually um, pulled out the old block is that the production levels of that old block were really, really bad. Um, the, um, there was a couple years on that older block, uh, where we only got like, um, one to two ton on an acre block. So if you're a grower, um, it's hard to, uh, sustain, uh, those kind of numbers. So, um, what we found out, um, over the years is, um, that old block, um, was used in an older clone. Um, I wrote that here, clone four. 
Um, and um, Clone Forges, for whatever reason, uh, did not do uh, very well here in Livermore. I mean, the quality was really good. However, the yields were really low. Um, and what we were getting a lot in the vineyards, uh, the Malbec vineyards, is a lot of shatter. So that's where you have the clusters, and then you have a lot of empty berries in the clusters. So then that really cuts down your, uh, your yields. Um, so then they replanted um, Clone 9. Um, and I think most of the new uh, blocks in Livermore that are being planted with Malbec, they're using Clone 9, and it seems it's doing very well here. So the production levels are very nice uh, while maintaining the, the quality. So um, if you look at the, the, the three uh, wines that we have here, um, this 2016 has 89% of the upper block or new block. Uh, the reason there's only 11% there is because, well, the old block didn't produce very much. Um, and then the 2017, um, same thing. We have 62% on the new block, 38% on the old block. Um, and then I think that vineyard, the old block was decommissioned in 2018. Um, and then the reserve is 100% of the upper new block. Um, so, um, so these wines that were tasted, it's all the same vineyard. However, two different vineyard blocks. Um, terroir is slightly different uh, because of the... Uh, the, uh, the uh, sloping hillsides of this vineyard, um, and also different clones. Um, as far as the barrel treatments go, um, um, the 2016, 2017, very similar. Um, we do our Malbec in American oak. Um, I like to use American oak for the Malbec because um, I think it's a, it brings out more boldness in the wine, more bold fruit. I think American oak tends to be a little bit more tannic um, a little stronger impact on the wine, um, but the Malbec so bold, I think it balances out nicely with that. Um, I actually see an error on my slide here. Um, the 2017 Malbec is really um, in American oak, so that's 18 months American oak. So sorry about that. That was a cutting and pasting error, um, but these are all American oak. Um, the 1617 Malbec, um, both, I mean, fairly similar on the barrel profiles, 41% new in the 16. We got 46% new on the 17. Um, and then you can see the once used in the neutral. Um, I actually like to use um, these uh, Nadalie barrels um, in the, with my Malbec. Um, I, I particularly like to use Pennsylvania oak. I think the Pennsylvania oak brings out a little more kind of meatiness in the wine. So we always use several of the, the Pennsylvania barrels in the, in the barrel lot. Um, and then the reserve, I mean, the fundamental difference between these, uh, the standard Malbacs and the reserve Malbac, well, there's two. Uh, one is um, when we pick the reserve, uh, we pick the best of the barrels. So um, in this case, um, we made um, two barrels worth of the reserve. So, we, so two of the barrels, uh, we picked the, what we thought were the two best barrels. Um, and we put those aside for the reserve program. Um, and then the other important difference is we age the reserve and for an extra year. So um, these, uh, the first two are what, about a year and a half um, on oak. This is about um, two and a half years on oak. Um, so um, we actually, the uh, 17 Malbec uh, was bottled a year ago. So it was bottled um, in, uh, I guess it would be May of uh, 20, um, 2019. Um, and then the 2017 Malbec Reserve, we just bottled this. So we bottled this at the end of April, April 29th. Um, so it's gonna be fun to taste the, the two side by side, the regular Malbec and the Reserve, uh, because of the differences in the barrels and the uh, aging, um, the, the, the time of aging, but also, um, you know, it was just bottled. So we'll see how it's doing uh, as a newly freshly bottled wine. <laughs> um, you can look at the chemistry here. So um, really low uh, alcohol with the 2016 at 12.5%. Our acids are all the same, right? Um, around, right around 0.6. And our pH is all right around the same ballpark, 3.52 3, to 3.59. Um, the major difference is, is alcohol here. Um, so you've got a jump here of 12.5 to 13.9 in the 2017, um, and uh, that's primarily, you know, due to differences uh, in the year and the vintage uh, of the wine and the brick levels that we picked uh, the Malbec at. Now, um, you look at the alcohol here between the 17 and the 17 reserve, 
and you had a big jump, right? So we're going from 13.9 alcohol to 14.85. That's almost 1% higher in the alcohol. Well, why is that? It's the same year. Well, if you go back and look at the blocks, upper block versus lower block, uh, the upper block uh, vineyard had a higher level of alcohol. So um, in the 2017, we had 38% lower, um, um, lower block that had lower alcohol and that was able to bring the alcohol uh, number down. So anyway, keep that in mind when you're tasting these Malbacs and see if you um, notice the difference in the alcohol uh, of these two wines. Okay, so I think we're done with the slide. And if anyone has any questions along the way, feel free to pop in a chat and we'll try to address those as we go or we can address them at the end. Okay, so let's start with the 2016 Malbec. So this was bottled two years ago, essentially. Um, the 2016, we are just running out of it. I think we have, I don't know, six to eight bottles to a case left at the winery. And then we're rolling over to the uh, 2017 vintage. So um, the 16, um, well, let me start with Annie. Annie, uh, what do you think of the 2016 Malbec? All right. On the uh, 2016 Malbec on the nose, I got a, it was very floral, a little bit of violet for me. I got some plum, black tea, a little bit of like a sweet tobacco hazelnut. Um, and then on the palate, it was a um, slight but adequate tannin, you know, and then I noticed that the fruits kind of changed from being like dark plums to more of the lighter fruit, a little more tart flavoring. I think that's because of the little bit of moderate acidity. The nice soft mouthfeel. I really enjoyed it. It's perfect for this heat right now. It's not too heavy. And uh, it has a little more pepper on the finish. Yeah, so I... I think I have fairly similar characteristics. I got kind of, I called it bright fruit on the nose, um, blackberry, dark berry, but um, I think it's really blackberry is what I'm getting. Um, and then uh, I got like a little anise, a little of the black licorice thing kind of going on um, on the nose. And that, that fruit carried over for me on the palate. Um, I would say to me, this wine is, is largely fruit forward. And, um, I, I get kind of a medium plus tannin on this, maybe medium plus to high tannin. I mean, I think it's got a lot of, um, a, a lot of tannin. However, um, on the front of the palate, um, I get a cleansing effect. So when I swish the wine around, I drink it, I get a kind of a tingling kind of cleansing on the, on the front of the palate. Um, I think that's largely um, from the acidity in the wine. Um, I definitely get a long finish with this wine. Um, and definitely getting the berry carrying over to the finish. Um, some of the pepper, I called it kind of green pepper um, on the finish. What do you think, Mike? I like, I like the spice. Um, you, you mentioned spice earlier, and that's what I get out of, I think, a good Malbec. Um, I think it has a really nice finish to it. Um, I think you, you, know, you touched on the, the lighter fruit. I think it's a perfect wine for this warm weather. I mean, we're in a heat wave right now, and the way yeah. we're starting off, uh, we're not even in the summer yet. So I think a Malbec, yeah. especially the 16 Malbec, and it'd be fun to, to taste the 17. Um, stylistically, I think they're 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 good red wines uh, for warm weather, mm -hmm. um, and they fit well with a lot of things that you put on the grill, including chicken. I mean, you know, it's one of the red wines that I think would go good with with barbecue chicken or pork. Right? Yeah. yeah, so, um, you know, I think Malbec goes very good with um, Spanish, Latin food, Spanish food, Mexican food. So um, I always pair it with, uh, when I'm doing kind of Mexican food, I always kind of grab a Malbec. Yeah, I do Malbec and tacos as well. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> favorite well I'm having Mexican food for dinner tonight, so I know where I'm going to keep going after this. There you go, <laughs> Malbec <friend. laughs> Okay, so um, let's move over to the 17 now. Um, so I'll, I'll kick things on off on this one. Um, you know, I uh, I love the nose on this one. Um, I get um, 
I get fruit, but I get more subdued fruit. Um, I get more, to me, I get more complexity in this wine. I get more complexity on the nose. Um, and actually I get more complexity um, on the palate as well. Um, I find this wine really well balanced. Um, I'm kind of getting on the nose, I'm getting the subdued fruit. Um, I'm getting pepper, I call the ground pepper. Uh, blackberry, I get a dustiness to it. And right now I'm just noticing a little vanilla. Um, coming out in it as well. Um, I think carrying over on the palate, I'm getting all that fruit, I'm getting uh, blackberry, but um, what hits me is just the, the balance in this wine. You know, I think on the um, 16, right, I got, um, as I had mentioned, the, uh, the medium plus to high tannin. Um, this one I get more just kind of, I'd say, well balanced, medium tannins. I don't get any, any it's not the tannins aren't jumping out at me like the 16 did. Um, not saying it's a good thing or bad thing. Some people like the higher level of tannins, um, but this one, I think the tannins are more integrated um, into the wine. Um, and then uh, the finish, uh, just a nice long finish on this. Yeah, right off the bat on the nose, it just kind of seemed a little more earthier. There's a little more complexity. Yeah. You kind of keep smelling and get in there to really uncover some more flavors. But on the nose, I was right where you were. I got that earthiness, a little more of that uh, subdued fruit. Um, got a little bit of like that cocoa powder um, or like a chocolate on the nose as well. And then for the palate, I thought it was a little more chewier than the uh, 16. It was a little bit heavier too in my mouth. Um, and then I also noticed the acidity wasn't really, uh, it was a lot more well-balanced, um, for me in the 17 than the uh, 16. Yeah, I, I would agree with all that. And I, I think the earthiness is, is a good uh, comment there. And, um, so I was talking earlier about the differences between kind of Argentina Malbec, Cahors, uh, Cahor, uh, Malbec, you know, I would say that the 17 Malbec, is probably leaning more towards the stylistic of a Cahor uh, style Malbec, where the 16 one with the fruit forward, the fruitiness is probably more like an Argentina one, although most of the Argentina ones I've had uh, tend to be much bolder fruit, more of that jammy style fruit. But um, stylistically, I would say this is more of an old world style kind of flavor profile versus the 16. Do you think that had to do with uh, the different earthiness thinking that it's from the same vineyard than the uh, harvest, the differences and weather played a part in the different vintages? Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably a couple of things. Um, one is, yeah, the, the, the differences in the year, um, just the terroir and the climate differences of the, of the, of the two years, um, and also um, magic through winemaking. So yes. um, <laughs> we... Uh, <laughs> Um, we've done some uh, finishing tannins um, on uh, on this wine, um, which I think has really ran, rounded it out. So um, I don't think we had those in the 16 version. Yeah, my, my thoughts on the 17, uh, I agree with both of you. This wine to me um, seems to be, just tastes a lot more rounded out. Annie, I think you used the term balanced. Um, I just get a real balanced wine here, you know, less acidity. Um, I love the finish and it's going to be fun to watch this wine age. I yes. Mean, you know, this is yeah. still young. This is just, uh, just being released, correct? Uh, yes, but it was bottled a year ago. Okay. So. so it's been bottled a year ago and just being released. And this, I think this wine is going to be fun to watch for the next year, how it matures. Um, I get a lot of earthiness into it, which is what, you know, it's a California Malbec, but one of the things that I love about French style wines is you get a lot more of that dirt. You know, you get to taste the soil, um, and it's something I really love about, you know, this varietal in particular. So, mm -hmm. nice job with this, Larry. Yeah, thank you. It's got a, um, to me, it's got a softness, velvety on the mouthfeel mm -hmm. um, that I don't get on, on the 16. The 16 is a little more edgy, I would say. But. And Linda and I thought so much about this wine that uh, we chose it as uh, our Connoisseur's Club Wine. It's one of the, the club wines for us in the month of June. Uh, which makes, you know, for 30 bucks, you get two wines. So you get this plus uh, another wine with it. That's a great deal. And uh, it is a great deal. <laughs> I, got, I had him over here telling me, you know, too cheap. <laughs> yes. uh, it was a great deal. And, you know, Linda and I taste, you know, sometimes 30 to 40 wines 
the select two that go into our monthly clubs. And, you know, we both fell in love with this wine right off the bat. So I think it's a winner. Great. So Susan says that's like for free. <laughs> Trust me, it's not for free. You don't know Linda Allen. <laughs> Okay, so let's um, move on to the, um, the reserve. So um, Annie, go ahead, kick it off. I'm really excited because this was the first time I tasted the 2017 reserve. Um, and I don't know if you guys know, but Malbec is my absolute favorite bridal that Larry's ever made. I remember when I started working for the winery, that was the only bottle I would take home. <laughs> uh, this one is... I got a little more smokiness out of it. It was, didn't, I didn't get the smokiness so much in the 2017 or the 2016, but this one to me has just got a little more smokiness, a little more toasted chocolate, dark fruits, um, and also the color is just a little more darker than the rest of them. And then on the palate, it was just very, um, nothing was too overwhelming. The tannin wasn't, the acid was so well balanced, and it was just soft and a nice smooth finish. This one stuck around a lot longer for me than um, any of the other ones. So I can really, I don't know, that extra year of aging, I could really kind of see that uh, come out in the 17 reserve. Yeah, I definitely see that as well. Um, I'm getting this, the subtle oak um, flavors in it, both on the nose, on the, 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 um, on the attack of the palate, and then also on the, the finish. And getting the blackberry, the spice, um, I get what I call the sweet oak. So um, the kind of way I explain that is um, if you've ever kind of cut uh, kind of fresh oak on like a table saw, you get that sweetness of that oak that just surrounds the room. I kind of getting that on my palate. Um, I'm getting stronger tannins. Um, I just now I'm getting kind of a caramel um, thing coming through on this as well. Um, on the finish, I'm getting a long, long finish on this, um, good wood. Uh, smoke. I'm getting the smokiness on the finish and the fruit. Um, I um, I am uh, I'm, I'm very happy with this wine. Um, I think um, I think it's still um, in bottle shock, um, so I still get it slightly disjointed. Um, I had tasted this a couple weeks ago, and it was even more disjointed. Um, so, um, but every uh, week it seems to be smoothing it out. One thing with Malbec as well that that we've noticed is. Malbec takes a long time to develop in the bottle. So out of all the wines that we do, uh, Malbec is the one that we got to leave in the bottle longer before we release it because it's a little rough at the beginning and the flavors start to develop, you know, six, nine months, a year in the bottle. Um, now this one, I think the flavors are there, the complexity and the layers are there, and I really like where it's at. And I can't wait to see what this wine is going to be like in another two to three months and six months down the road. Hey, Larry, a uh, question I have, and it was really very interesting to me as you were talking about picking, going through and looking at the different barrels, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how you select your reserve. Can you kind of go into a little bit more detail with us on that process and how that process works? Yeah, um, so there's couple of us, um, Mike Ravelli, who's also on the uh, calls, uh, goes through the barrels uh, with me as well. Um, so there's usually two or three of us, and we kind of go through the, the barrels. So we'll usually pick a lot, you know, one varietal at a time. So in the case of Malbec, you know, I don't know, we make anywhere between 15 to 25 barrels of Malbec every year. So we'll go ahead and go through the barrels um, and then pick out the characteristics that we like in the barrels. And sometimes, I mean, it just jumps out at you. I mean, sometimes we'll taste a barrel. It's like, oh my God, this is just wonderful. Double star it. This is the reserved lot. And then sometimes it's, it's a little more uh, tedious and we're doing a little more uh, going back and forth. But, um, you know, we're, one thing we got to be careful of too when we're doing the barrel surfing here for the reserves um, is that we don't want to pick um, a lot in... Um, of new oak, right? We want to balance new oak with uh, neutral or once used because um, I, I mean, I don't like oak, oaky wines. Um, that's not the style we're trying to do. So we want the balanced oak, but we don't want it over oaky. So um, most of the time we tend to pick a new barrel um, and then we tend to pick a once used or a neutral barrel to balance out that oak. So but anyway, it's just, it's really subjective. I mean, whatever we kind of 
Yeah, it's subjective, but you, yep. you, you know, we all know Mike Ravelli has a terrific palate. So I think it, it, there's a, the reason I asked the question, there's a lot of science behind it. It's kind yeah. of a science and you're also in our gut. You're yeah. a long term yeah. winemaker. And uh, yeah. to me, I just, I was curious on, you know, how you're going through and picking that out. So thank you. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, I'm happy where this is at right now. Um, I think the 17 vintage of Malbec is really nice. So I'm, I'm happy with both of these wines. Um, this is probably a good time, Neil, to bring up the survey. So we've got a little survey here. Do, uh, do we, Neil? Yeah, we got a survey here. So, you know, so um, you get now. a vote on uh, which wine you like the best. So out of these three. So um, on my screen, this popped up here. So I'm gonna let Mike vote on our side. <laughs> So Mike, you get a push, uh, go ahead and select the one you think is best. Don't, don't say anything though. Andrea is voting for our side. Which one? So, <laughs> push the one that I, what you think is the, the one you like the best out of the three. And submit that. Oh. All right, we've got 21 of 20. If you're on Facebook, um, go ahead and comment. Let us know <laughs> what your favorite is. I see a comment here from Jeff, and he likes the balance of the 2017 versus the 2016. Who was that? Uh, Jeff. Jeff Smith. Sorry, I'm Latin. I don't know sometimes how to pronounce last names. <laughs> <laughs> yes, got a Latin young accent. Young uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got 22 and 28 here. A few more seconds. <clears throat> 22, almost everyone's voted. We didn't introduce Andrea here, but Andrea is with Neil there. Is, is, they just got married in November, so. Uh, um, we could get married. <laughs> still newlyweds. Rob, to answer your question on what Riedel series glasses I'm using, it's the Performance series. Um, I actually got to go with Linda and First Street Wine Company and uh, got to try these uh, glasses with them. So those are my my Bordeaux that I'm using. Yeah, we were going to do a Riedel tasting at Cooter Ridge in April, but uh, <laughs> kind of got canceled with everything else nowadays. <laughs> Hopefully we can. Well, Larry, maybe we'll be able to do it like next April. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hopefully. Yeah. So, um, Neil, what kind of results do we have on the, what's the verdict on the- a couple line? more seconds. We've only got 23, but we okay. need five seconds, then I'm ending it. Okay. Everyone's got a few, few more seconds to get your vote in, for those of you that are trying the wines. I had to change my background. It kept uh, making one of us disappear. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, oh. so I had to, had to Is that taste- a result? There's the results. Wow. So 52% on the reserve, 26% uh, on the 17, and then 9% on the 16. So very good. Yeah, I, uh, oh, and then there's a 13% need to, need to try them all again. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, those are the professional people that come to the wineries. <laughs> they need to retaste. <laughs> so we're um, open. Yeah, we'll we be able to have game. everyone. Uh, Hoping we'll be able to have everyone soon. So, so yeah, we, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I would, uh, um, I, I, I guess I kind of agree with that. You know, right now the 17 Malbec, I'm really liking the reserve though. I think um, I really like the complexity depth of the reserve. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's still bottle shock. So, you know, I think, you know, that reserve wine is going to be phenomenal. Um, I, um, I actually think the 2017 Malbec, both the 17 Malbec and the Reserve, um, I think it's the best Malbec we've ever made. So in the past, I think 20, uh, the 2012 Malbec is the one that kind of people keep commenting on and coming back to. Um, but um, this is going to give the 2012 uh, run for its money, I believe. 